peace on earth. <laughs> Just think about that. I'd like to read with you a familiar passage, maybe familiar to most of you. If not, if this is one of the first times you've heard it, this is an exciting account. It speaks about the whole Christmas account in Scripture. Luke 2, I'll read verses 8 through 14. Scripture says, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. The angel said to him, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. So what message was in the words that the angel spoke that Christmas night? They spoke about one thing. The good news was there would be peace on earth. You know, it's almost as though the angels must have been totally unaware of what was happening on earth because there has not been peace. You know that during the past 2,500 years, there have been over 905 wars and about 1,600 revolutions. That's an average of almost one a year for 100 generations. So wars didn't cease on that first Christmas night. Peace on earth did not come. Millions and millions have died in these conflicts. Still today, there's no peace. As Longfellow wrote the words to his Christmas hymn, I heard the bells on Christmas Day. The Civil War was in full swing. As a matter of fact, the Battle of Gettysburg had occurred six months earlier. The days were dark. And so Longfellow wrote, and I quote, And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Even in 2022, we can identify with Longfellow's despair. We too can be tempted to say that this message of the angels was just an idle dream. So, were the angels wrong? I emphatically say no. The truth is, peace did come. That a war did end on that first Christmas. The angels were not wrong. You see, the angels' message heralded the end of a war. We rejoice in this because Jesus came into the world and he came to die on Calvary's cross. And the war that began when sin entered the world ended. When Christ came, he ended a war that cost billions and billions of lives. In fact, the war is the reason all of us die in the first place. You see, the angel's message says that this can end. It tells us there can be peace on earth. There can once again be good between God and man. You might say, well, how's that possible? How can this peace come? I think two things make this peace on earth possible. First, for there to be peace, there must be a peace offering. A peace offering is defined as um, uh, a gift or service for the purpose of gaining peace or reconciliation. You know, in the, in the Old Testament, there are dozens of references to the Hebrew people recognizing this battle of sin between themselves and God. So they would bring peace offerings. They would bring sacrifices to God, to the temple. However, Jesus came to, being, to be the peace offering for, to God for all of mankind. And you know what? I would just pause and say, hallelujah. The prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 53, 5, he said, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripe, we are healed. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. In Romans 5, 10, uh, Paul, Paul wrote, uh, I think it goes, While we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. How much more are we reconciled? Shall we be saved by his life? I think that's a pretty crude translation of the verse. You see, Jesus is the source of peace. And when this peace dwells within men, there can be peace among men. See, when you have access to God through Jesus, the great peace offering, when you realize that you have the gift of eternal life, then you can have peace in all aspects of life. Nothing, nothing can disturb that peace. Not illness, not not financial troubles, not even death. 
Paul said in Philippians 4, 7 that you can, you can enjoy peace. He said it this way. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And the key to realizing this is that you need to know that peace doesn't come from the absence of trouble. Peace comes from the presence of God. So for there to be peace, there must be a peace offering. And secondly, for there to be peace, you must be willing to share it. I don't know if you noticed with me what the angels were told, what the angels told the shepherds on that night. But if we go to Luke chapter 2, back to our passage and look at verse 17, it says this, And when they saw it, meaning the child, the, the shepherds had gone to see the child, when they saw the child, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it, at what the, and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. So the shepherds were the first to hear this message of peace and see for themselves. But when they were sent to go find him and they saw him, they were quick to spread the good news. And this is what God wants you and I to do as well. Listen to what Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to read verses 18 through 20. Paul says this, All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespass against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, you and I, believers, we are ambassadors for Christ, and God is making his appeal through us. See, if there's going to be peace on earth and goodwill to all men, then all men need to hear this wonderful news. And for this to happen, then someone has to tell them the war is over. Peace has been made possible because a baby was born in a manger. Christ had come, the Savior of the world. Go tell it. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for this special time at Christmas when we can pause and celebrate the birth of Christ, knowing that he came with the sole mission in mind to be obedient to your call on his life, to go to the cross, to die on the cross for our sins, to end the battle between man and God, and to open up the door for a relationship with you as we trust him by faith. Thank you, God, for sending your son. That's good news. It's peace on earth, goodwill to men. Peace comes through you, Father, and through your son, Jesus Christ. For this we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen.